Welcome to Mes Murder, a podcast for those mesmerized by murder, mysteries, and true crime. Today's story is about a child murderer from the United Kingdom, the murders of Mary Bell. Let's begin. <music> was born to a 17-year-old prostitute in England, 1957. Mary's mother, Betty, was neglectful, and family members even reported that they believed she tried to kill Mary multiple times, dropping her from a window and drugging her with sleeping pills. Mary's father, Billy, was even less supportive, known to be a thief and alcoholic. In Gita Sereni's novel, Cries Unheard, Mary was interviewed and detailed the abuse she suffered at home. For example, Mary wet the bed almost nightly, and Betty would rub her face in the wet spot, then hang the mattress outside for the neighbors to see. Even worse, Mary stated that her mother, a prostitute who specialized in domination, began selling her out to men at the age of four. It's safe to say Mary didn't have a good home life or childhood. In May 1968, the Bell family lived in Newcastle-upon-Tyne in the United Kingdom. Mary had a reputation amongst the other children for being a thief and a bully. There was an incident where she may have pushed a boy off an air raid shelter, and another where she was accused of choking the necks of three girls. On May 25, 1968, when Mary was 11 years old, she lured four-year-old Martin Brown into an abandoned building and strangled him. She then went to get her best friend and neighbor, 13-year-old Norma Bell, no relation, to show her what she'd done. While Mary was gone, some boys found the body and alerted construction workers nearby. When Mary returned to the house with her friend, they were told to leave. Investigators found no signs of violence on Martin Brown's body, only that some saliva was foaming from his mouth. Nearby him was a spilled bottle of pills, and so they assumed that the toddler had died from swallowing medication. Mary's actions over the next few days were very suspicious, but weren't taken into account until later. In her school notebook, Mary drew a picture of a boy lying on the ground with a man walking towards him, and a bottle by the boy which she labeled tablet. Her notebook entry read, On Saturday, I was in the house, and my man sent me to ask Norma if she would come up the top with me. We went up, and we came down at Margaret's Road, and there were crowds of people beside an old house. I asked what was the matter there had been a boy who just lay down and died. Also suspicious was a break-in at a nursery school, later found to have been done by Mary and Norma. They ransacked the classroom and left notes filled with misspellings of rude language. The notes included statements like, I murder so that I may come back. We did murder Martin Brown. And you better look out, there are murderers about. Four days after the murder of Martin Brown, Mary visited his house and asked his mother, June, to see him. June, thinking Mary was innocent, said, No pet, Martin is dead. To this, Mary replied, Oh, I know he's dead. I wanted to see him in his coffin. She was smiling the whole time. That same week, Mary and Norma were caught trying to break into the nursery school again after setting off the new alarm system the school had set up. They were both released into the custody of their parents. It seemed that Mary had gotten away with murder, and she grew more confident as days passed. She even bragged to schoolmates that she was a killer. In July of the same year, two months later, three-year-old Brian Howe went missing. When family and friends searched for the child, Mary told Brian's sister, Pat, that he might be playing amongst some concrete blocks in a nearby lot. When the area was later searched, the body of Brian Howe was discovered. He had been strangled. A discarded razor and pair of scissors had also been used to cut chunks off of his hair, scratch his legs, and mutilate his genitals. Someone had also carved the letter M into his stomach. Investigators began to interview the neighborhood children, and this is where Mary and Norma began to look suspicious. Their stories changed, and they tried to evade answering certain questions. 
the girls seemed to have found the entire situation entertaining. During one of her interviews, Mary stated that she saw a boy with Brian Howe the day he was murdered, and that he was carrying scissors. After realizing that the boy could not have been there, and because she knew about the scissors found near the crime scene, police began to suspect Mary Bell in the murder. Detectives watched her during Brian Howe's funeral, noticing that she was laughing and rubbing her hands together. The same day, Norma confessed to police that Mary had brought her to see Brian's body and said she'd killed him. Norma gave an official statement, stating his lips were purple. Mary ran her fingers along his lips. She said that she enjoyed it. She squeezed his neck and pushed up his lungs. Near midnight, Mary Bell was picked up by the police and questioned about the murder of Brian Howe until 3 a.m. She admitted to nothing, stating that an eyewitness would have had to have good eyesight to see me when I wasn't there, asking if the room was bugged, and saying that Norma's a liar, always tries to get me in trouble. The next time Mary Bell was interviewed, she accused Norma of strangling the boy and cutting his body. After this, both Mary Bell and Norma Bell, again, no relation, were arrested on August 5th, 1968. That's all right by me, stated Mary after being arrested. Mez Murder will be back after a message from our sponsors. Mez Murder is supported by Anchor FM. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. In fact, Anchor FM is the platform that I use to make Mez Murder. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back to Mez Murder. And now, let's continue with today's story. After being arrested, Mary Bell gave an official statement. Sections of it reads as follows. I, Mary Flora Bell, wish to make a statement. I want someone to write down what I have to say. I have been told that I need not say anything unless I wish to do so, but that whatever I say may be given in evidence. Brian was in his front street, and me and Norma were walking along towards him. We walked past him, and Norma says, Are you coming to the shop, Brian? And I says, Norma, you've got no money. How can you go to the shop? Where are you getting it from? Little Brian followed, and Norma says, walk up front. I wanted Brian to go home, but Nora kept coughing so Brian wouldn't hear us. We went down Cross Hill Road with Brian still in front of us. We went beside Dixon's shop and climbed over the railings. I mean, through a hole and over the railway. Then I said, Norma, where are you going? And Norma said, do you know that little pool where the tadpoles are? When we got there, there was a big long tank with a big round hole with little holes round it. Norma says to Brian, are you coming in here because there's a lady coming and she's got boxes of sweets. We all got inside, then Brian started to cry and Norma asked him if he had a sore throat. She started to squeeze his throat and he started to cry. She said, this isn't where the lady comes, it's over there by them big blocks. We went over to the blocks, and she says, you'll have to lie down, and he lay down beside the blocks where he was found. Norma says, put your neck up, and he did. Then she got hold of his neck. She squeezed it hard. You could tell it was hard because her fingertips were going white. Brian was struggling. I was pulling her shoulders, but she went mad. By this time, she had banged Brian's head on some wood or corner of wood, and Brian was lying senseless. His face was all white and bluey, and his eyes were open. His lips were purplish, and had all like slaver on it. It turned into something like fluff. Norma covered him up, and I said, Norma, I've got nothing to do with this. I should tell on you, but I'll not. We went home. Norma was acting kind of funny, and making twitchy faces, and spreading her fingers out. She said, this is the first, but it'll not be the last. I was frightened then. 
Norma went into the house, and she got a pair of scissors. She had a Gillette razor blade. We went back to the blocks, and Norma cut his hair. She tried to cut his leg and his ear with the blade. She hit the razor blade under a big square concrete block. She left the scissors beside him. She got out before me over the grass onto Scottswood Road. When we got along a bit, she says, Mary, you shouldn't have done that, because you'll get into trouble. And I hadn't done nothing. I haven't got the guts. I couldn't kill a bird by the neck or throat or anything. It's horrible, that. We went up the steps and went home. I was nearly crying. Later on, I was helping to look for Brian, and I was trying to let on to Pat that I knew where he was in the blocks. But Norma said, he'll not be over there. He never goes there. And she convinced Pat he wasn't there. I got shouted in about half past seven, and I stayed in. I got woke up at about half past eleven, and we stood at the door as Brian had been found. Mary Flora Bell. While being held for court, Mary became close to the female guards. They noticed her fear of wetting the bed, and listened to the sometimes strange things that she said, such as saying she'd like to be a nurse, because then I can stick needles into people. I like hurting people. In one instance, Mary had a stray cat by the neck and told a guard, I like hurting little things that can't fight back. The trial of Mary Bell and Norma Bell began in December 1968 and lasted for nine days. Both girls were charged with two counts of manslaughter, as the prosecution believed that whoever murdered Brian Howe was also responsible for the murder of Martin Brown. During the trial, Mary sat still and didn't smile, only shaking her head when she didn't like what was being said. Her mother, Betty, wearing a skewed blonde wig, disrupted the trial with loud cries and sobs, even storming out in rage at one time, while her father just sat as emotionless as his daughter. They did not offer Mary any sympathy or comfort. Here the evidence against Mary stacked up. Her strange behavior, breaking into the nursery and leaving the notes, her school notebook and drawing, and asking Martin's mother to see his body. Gray fibers found at both crime scenes also implicated Mary, as they were matched to a wool dress she owned. When Norma testified, she stated that she had witnessed Mary strangle Brian Howe, while Mary testified that it was Norma who had strangled the boy. The jury returned a verdict in less than four hours. Norma Bell was found not guilty on both counts of manslaughter, but given three years probation for breaking into the nursery school. Mary Bell was convicted of manslaughter in the deaths of the two boys, but under diminished responsibility, meaning that it was believed Mary was suffering from such abnormality of mind, which substantially impaired her mental responsibility for her acts. Mary was sentenced to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure, an indefinite sentence of time. Upon hearing this, Mary broke into tears. Her parents did nothing to comfort her. The story of Mary Bell doesn't end with her imprisonment. In fact, there is so much more to her story regarding her incarceration, but that's for another time. In 1980, after serving 12 years, Mary Bell was released from prison. She was 23 years old. The courts granted her anonymity, giving her a new name and allowing her to start her life again. In 1984, Mary gave birth to a daughter. Ironically, the child was born on May 25th, the same day that Mary had murdered Martin Brown in 1968. Mary's daughter was granted an anonymity as well. In 1998, Mary Bell allowed Gita Sereni to interview her for the book Cries Unheard, Why Children Kill, the story of Mary Bell. Public outcry sprang up when it was revealed Mary had been paid for her time, with the media outraged that Mary had gained from talking about her crimes. People tracked her down and spoke about wanting her anonymity revoked. In 2003, Mary Bell's anonymity was extended to last for the rest of her life and also to include her daughter. It later extended to her granddaughter as well, born in 2009. Today, Mary Bell's current identity and location are unknown. In 2020, Mary Bell is 63 years old. <laughs>